This is our fourth quarter webinar uh, that we host in conjunction with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Uh, today, we're going to be reviewing our uh, 2021 year-end data. Um, and if you saw the title of this uh, webinar, you see that I titled it The Worst of Times. And you'll see pretty soon why we titled it uh, that way. Um, as we're moving through this webinar, uh, you're going to hear from uh, three different people today. Um, but I want to make sure to remind everybody to ask questions. This, this group, this is our fifth webinar that we've hosted over the period of this cooperative agreement. And I want to make sure that folks definitely ask questions and we will do our best to get to the questions at the end. And this has always been a really good crowd for uh, asking really good questions and uh, letting us uh, get, get back to you. Um, I want to begin by introducing Will Price from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's Enforcement and Justice Services Division. Um, Will, welcome. What have you got for us today? Well, good morning, good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you're in. I'm in Arizona, so it's still morning here. Um, thank you, Nick and Troy, for pulling this together. Um, I'll, I'll keep it brief. You know, we've had a long relationship and partnership with the Memorial. And our emphasis and focus is on the safety of the men and women in law enforcement, with a particular emphasis on traffic related incidents. And as Nick said when he opened the program, that things are not good. Um, 2021 was a very bad year uh, for our brothers and sisters in the profession. And we've lost far too many people uh, in general, uh, but certainly far too many to traffic related incidents. Uh, I think we had 57 last year, which was a substantial increase over 2020. Uh, nearly half of those were struck by incidents. I'm sure Nick will get into that and the details of that, but I did wanna share with our audience how important the safety of uh, the men and women of law enforcement is to us at NHTSA, um, all up and down my chain of command, and certainly from, from where I sit, we're all retired law enforcement. And we recognize our programs don't work without our friends and our partners in law enforcement. So doing everything we can to keep them safe uh, and to keep those of you in our audience safe is, is a very, very high priority uh, for us. And so thank you for joining us today. I'll... Uh, I'll be standing by in case anybody has questions for us. But uh, Nick, thank you very much. Troy, thank you. Um, I'll look forward to seeing you this weekend in Washington when we do a seminar on this topic at the National Sheriff's Association meeting, uh, the midwinter meeting uh, that'll occur on Sunday at 10 a.m. So if you're anywhere near the JW Marriott uh, in downtown DC, please come in and spend a little time with us. We have a very good program planned uh, for our audience when we're there. So with that, Nick, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you. Great, and yeah, thank you again, Will. Um, and uh, I look forward to our presentation this Sunday as well. And it's nice to be able to hopefully get back to a more regular schedule of conferences um, and uh, being able to do in-person seminars the way we're gonna do on Sunday. Um, as Will mentioned, and I said at the beginning of this, you know, we're going to talk about the really bad news that occurred in 2021, and unfortunately, it seems to still be occurring in 2022. So we want to give you the full picture of the line of duty deaths that occurred in 2021. Um, so everyone gets the idea as to where things are. And um, as Will mentioned, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of the traffic related fatalities. But we're going to hear from Troy Anderson. Troy is the executive director here at the National Law Enforcement Officer, Officers Memorial Fund, and uh, he's the executive director of our Officer Safety and Wellness Program. So I'm going to turn it over to Troy, and Troy is going to take us through and give us, as I said, an overview of 2021 and, and what's been happening. Troy? Thank you, Nick, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to join you all. Uh, on this webinar uh, to discuss our 2021 end of year preliminary National Law Enforcement Officers Fatality Report. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund is the preeminent national authority on the certification of official 
law enforcement line of duty deaths. Our yearly year-end fatality report affords our nation an opportunity to further understand the causative factors that have killed our nation's law enforcement officers during 2021. And quite frankly, this year, the numbers are staggering. According to preliminary data, as of December 31st, 2021, 458 federal, state, county, tribal, campus, and municipal law enforcement officers died in the line of duty. This is an increase of approximately 55% from the 295 officers killed during the same period last year, and is the highest total line of duty death since 1930, when there were 312 fatalities. This year's statistics demonstrate that America's frontline law enforcement continue to confront the deadly effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the performance of their duties. Preliminary data shows that 301 officer fatalities have been identified as being caused by COVID-19 this year. And sadly, this appears to increase almost daily. COVID-19 related fatalities continue to be the highest single cause of law enforcement deaths occurring in 2021. Following my review of this report, Nick will be taking on a deeper dive into the dramatic increase in traffic related fatalities, which is also cause for alarm for law enforcement agencies nationwide. In 2021, preliminary data shows that 58 officers died due to traffic related causes, such as single vehicle crashes, vehicle collisions, motorcycle crashes, and struck by incidents. These traffic related fatalities are an increase of 38% compared to the 42 deaths during the same period last year. In 2021, 84 officers died from felonious assaults, including 62 officers killed in the line of duty because of firearms. The leading circumstances of firearm fatalities were officers killed by ambush style attacks. A total of 19 officers were killed in ambush attacks in 2021, a significant increase over only six such attacks in 2020. Of the 458 preliminary law enforcement line of duty deaths this year, firearms fatalities are the second leading cause of law enforcement deaths. These deaths represent a 38% increase. Handguns were the leading type of firearm used in fatal shootings of law enforcement officers killed in 2021. Of the 62 officer fatalities, 32 were killed by handgun, eight were killed by rifle, four killed by shotguns, and one was killed by the officer's own weapon. The type of firearm used in the remaining 17 fatalities is still under investigation or unknown at this time. The single largest category of officer fatalities in this report is the other category. Preliminary data reveals that 338 officers died of the other category in 2021, compared to 208 line of duty fatalities in this category last year during the same period. This represents a 63% increase in fatalities over 2020. These include 25 officers who died in the line of duty from health-related illnesses, such as heart attacks, strokes, and 9-11 related illness. In addition, four officers were beaten to death and four officers drowned. There were two officers stabbed to death, one was killed when their patrol vehicle was swept away by floodwaters, and one was killed in a tornado. Of the 458 confirmed law enforcement line of duty deaths from January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021, preliminary reports demonstrate COVID-19 related fatalities are the single leading cause of law enforcement deaths. To date, 301 COVID-19 related fatalities have been identified by the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. To properly identify these cases, the memorial implements a stringent review process, which includes agency submissions, medical report evaluations, and a peer review committee. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund and its COVID-19 task force work with agencies to determine whether officers experience direct exposure to individuals with COVID-19 while they were performing their official law enforcement capacity. In 2021, the state of Texas experienced the highest number of law enforcement officer fatalities in the United States with 84 line of duty deaths. Florida had the second highest with 52 officer deaths and Georgia suffered 39 line of duty officer deaths. Only 10 states and the District of Columbia did not lose an officer this year. 
There were 417 male officers killed in the line of duty and 41 female officers. The average age of the fallen officers was 48 with 17 years of service. On average, officers left behind two children. The data contained in this, in this preliminary report provides a platform and an opportunity to look deeper into what causes are killing officers nationally. The subject of this report is a meaningful tool for administration, leadership, and rank and file officers for consideration when taking proactive measures to affect enhanced training opportunities, application of technology, equipment, and policies to reinforce the safety and well being of all law enforcement officers nationwide. The ongoing mission of the Officer Safety and Wellness Pillar of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund is to keep names off the wall and to make the vocation of law enforcement safer for those who serve. Thanks, Nick. I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you, Troy. And I, I neglected to mention uh, Troy, who is a relatively new member of the team here at the Memorial Fund is a retired sergeant with the Connecticut State Police. If you couldn't tell from his background, now you get, now you get an image of what all that stuff is back there. So again, uh, Troy, thank you for all that. And it, it is in fact sobering uh, data. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I think the numbers are going to grow even for 2021. Um, and as we talk about data and I review my data that I do the deep dive into, um, you'll see that data can be fluid. And you know, we get cases submitted to us that we evaluate and, and may or may not meet our criteria. Um, so the numbers until we really refine all of this can sometimes remain fluid. And sadly, I think there are more uh, cases that may be added to the 2021 total, uh, even higher than what Troy had uh, just mentioned. I should also mention that I like to uh, broadcast here from the um, police museum. And if you noticed what's behind me, um, I know you can't see it right now, but what is behind me are all of the plaques that identify each officer killed in the line of duty. This is the 2020 class that's behind me. Um, and, and soon we'll be adding the 2021 group uh, to this wall behind me. Again, we engrave the names on the wall. There are uh, 22,611 names on the wall. So this is just a sampling of what we're talking about. And I think it's important that we put literally a face on who we're talking about. This group of officers here represents 32% of the officers who were killed in traffic-related fatalities in 2021. That's just 32% of those faces there. Um, and uh, you heard Troy describe the average age and average years of service for overall line of duty deaths. For traffic, the average age was 40, average years of service was 14. Uh, we had 53 uh, men killed and um, four women died in the line of duty. Um, and the statistics I'm going to uh, quote today are uh, built around the refined study that I've done of all the 2021 related traffic fatalities. So here we are um, in just looking at the differences across the two years, uh, you see that traffic related uh, uh, between 2020 and 2021, it's 36% higher. We're gonna now get into a little bit more about what that number represents by looking at the 2021 traffic related law enforcement fatalities. Um, and there's a picture of a guy there, looks like he's gonna throw out some tire deflation devices. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. Compared to 2020, uh, you see that struck by crashes, we doubled them. And that's my biggest area of concern today. Um, not that they're not all important, but clearly something is going on here uh, when we are talking about a 100% increase in struck by crashes. Uh, I believe for historical purposes, this is the highest number we have ever recorded for struck by crashes in a single year throughout all the data we collect. Automobile crashes, we were up by one, 18 compared to 17, and you see motorcycle crashes were, were even. So let's get into it and talk about what was happening in each one of these categories. So we have automobile crashes, meaning vehicles that uh, impacted with another vehicle or were involved in a single vehicle crash. So 18 of those 26 automobile crashes that we had were in fact collisions with other vehicles, semis, buses, other cars, um, whereas eight of those 
were single vehicle crashes where a vehicle went off the roadway. The most common scenario is uh, for often reasons unknown, a police car either responding to a call for service or responding uh, to an assignment or even on patrol uh, loses um, uh, its control and goes off the roadway and impacts with a utility tree or a pole. Um, those are very common or there's a rollover. Um, so that's kind of what the, that, that's what the 2021 automobile crashes look like. The circumstances of those vehicle crashes, eight of those officers were responding to calls, either calls for service or calls for assistance. Not all of them were priority responses, but most of them were. Six were on patrol or on an administrative run, meaning they were en route to pick something up at the jail or en route to um, uh, training, or, or they were simply patrolling their beats or patrolling their territory. Uh, two were vehicles that would really come under our struck by category, although in, in our struck by category, we're talking about people, but two vehicles were parked diverting traffic at a scene and uh, the vehicles were struck in the rear uh, and the individuals who were in those patrol cars that were struck in the rear were both killed by the impact. Uh, one was actively pursuing a suspect vehicle and another officer was intentionally uh, ramped. Um, as we look at the single vehicle crashes, again, five were responding to calls for service or assistance. Uh, one vehicle did crash and the uh, report indicated that uh, the rear tire had blown out on the, on the patrol car, causing the officer to lose control. One of them crashed while on patrol and then one crashed en route to his assignment. So it kind of just gives you an overview as, as to a little bit of what's happening in the car or what, what they're doing when the crashes occurred. And looking at our motor crashes, you see that there were three of them. Uh, one was en route to an assignment when he crashed. Another one was escorting. And, and we've mentioned escorting as one of the more dangerous activities as we've looked at motorcycle fatalities over the years. Um, it is one of the highest categories or circumstances in which officers are killed or seriously injured when they are frog leaping or slingshotting, whatever you want to call it, or they are in a line um, moving ahead uh, with vehicles headed to a service, um, usually a funeral or, or an internment that they're heading to. And either as they're cutting and pulling traffic, they get struck, or one of the circumstances is vehicles pull out of the line of cars going to either the service, the internment, not realizing a motorman is coming up on their left or right hand side and there, there's a collision. And then one uh, officer was attempting to stop a spear when they uh, crashed. So this is really uh, the big category here. And I, I think I've already covered some of these numbers, um, but there were 28 law enforcement officers struck and killed by vehicles. And as I mentioned, it's the highest number on record. 48% um, of these crashes occurred at existing crash scenes. And I think that's something we can really pull out of. And if you were to then tack on the two other that I mentioned were the rear of the vehicle that was diverting traffic where an officer was seated in a vehicle, uh, they were also at crash scenes. One was at a crash scene, one was at a construction scene. This is, I think, where we need to focus our efforts on preventing officers from being struck and begin to look at some of those solutions that we've put out before, but are still viable solutions with regard to TIM training, wearing reflective vests, positioning vehicles, making scenes safer. Um, and as I mentioned, this is a 100% increase from 2020. So I, I've been working for the Memorial Fund for a long time, and uh, I've never recalled any category that doubled from one year to the next. So I think it's a real problem. So what was happening at the struck by? I mentioned that 13 were at existing crash scenes. They were already on the scene of the crash when somebody else came in and either due to weather, although those were not high incidents in terms of weather, for whatever reason, they're distracted. They're looking at the lights. Uh, uh, who, who knows what's going on in all of these? Um, I'll talk a little bit about what we do know in some of them. But uh, crash scenes is our number one circumstance for struck buys. Four of the officers involved were intentionally run down by suspects. Um, this is when they were either uh, out um, and they were trying to make a traffic stop on a suspect who was wanted, who then um, drove and, and were, was able to get out and run officers down. Um, three were deploying tire deflation devices. And we do have some later cases that we're still waiting to get data on. That number may go up. 
Um, as I'm finishing my analysis of all the 2021 cases, we had a few cases that occurred later in December of 2021. So very often that takes a while for that information to get to us. So I, I, I think there may be another tire deflation attempt by an officer where he gets struck by the suspect that's gonna be added to that circumstance. Uh, two were assisting disabled motorists. Uh, two were on traffic stops when they were struck, and then one officer was struck and killed while removing debris from the roadway. And that the, the removing debris from a roadway is something that we've seen uh, quite uh, quite common in some of these cases, um, particularly those things occurring during night under limited light. So I mentioned I would sort of talk a little bit about what I've discovered in terms of the collisions and what may have led to some of these collisions. Um, Eleven of the drivers involved in collisions or who struck officers were impaired, uh, meaning they were drunk or, or on drugs. Um, it was confirmed that two were distracted and that one was falling asleep behind the wheel when the collision occurred. One of the things that we also got out of when we review a lot of this is we also found that uh, in three of these cases, officers were themselves confirmed to be distracted and um, contributing to their collisions. Um, and in, in a, at a couple of the cases, it was confirmed the officers were on their cell phones while driving um, and uh, talking with other officers, I guess, to coordinate their response, um, but, but could be heard in both the instances that come to my mind, the officers they were on the phone with heard them get into their collisions. Um, and, in, and in two of those cases, it was a result of officers running stop signs, unfortunately. Nine officers involved in auto crashes were not wearing their seatbelts. That represent about 35%. Again, some of the data is not complete. The number may go up, but generally that's kind of good news because normally the number's higher. Normally the number's in the high 40% range, closer to 50% range when we've looked at it in the past. So it could, could be that there is some improvement there and that there's some good news with regard to officers wearing their seatbelts. Um, also, we looked at who wears their body armor, if they're wearing their body armor. 70% of the officers were confirmed and been wearing their body armor. Uh, this is also good, uh, could be better. Um, but if you remember the uh, police service video, safety video we made with Officer Heisler from Macedonia, Ohio, uh, he commented when he was struck by the vehicle, he believes his vest helped prevent him becoming more seriously injured. So we look at that body armor to help protect against crush injuries and crash injuries. I mentioned weather. Weather was cited as a factor in six of the 57 traffic-related fatalities we have. That's not very significant. Uh, the weather that was cited was mostly rain. Ice was cited in one. Um, uh, fog was cited in another. And in another, visibility was reduced severely by a sandstorm, which caused a um, officer to be struck by other vehicles when he was on the side of the road. They, they couldn't see him. So reduced visibility uh, as well as bad road surfaces are, of course, contributing factors to these crashes. So I think a lot of uh, the, the data that NHTSA is interested in and that we're interested in is also around the move over laws and how these move over laws are impacting safety. Are they well known? Are they being enforced? How can we do better? Um, 15 of the fatalities involved violations of the slowdown and move over law. 13 of the struck by crashes or 46% of those cases involved a violation of that state's slow down and move over law. And essentially that means their lights were on, they were an emergency vehicle on the shoulder or in the roadway, um, which in all the states, in all 50 states, the way their law is written, um, that requires motorists seeing those emergency vehicles with their emergency lights on, that they should slow down and uh, as always, get over to a safer lane if practicable, but they always have to slow down. So if you crash right into a car, obviously you're not obeying the law. So I mentioned the tire deflation devices. And since 2015, 10 officers have been killed deploying these or trying to pull them out of the roadway. In some instances, suspects intentionally run, ran officers over. Uh, in other instances, and you see here, three officers that we know of were struck by other patrol cars uh, who were involved in the pursuit that that officer was trying to end by uh, deploying those tire deflation devices. So it's a real area of caution, I think, for law enforcement. And as I mentioned, there are three cases in 2021 of officers being killed while trying to deploy tire deflation devices, and we may possibly have another. Um, and uh, I think this is an area where we can Im improve safety and improve our tactics for how and when those uh, items get deployed. 
So the states with the highest number of traffic related incidents in 2021, and it's, it's interesting, and I'm gonna talk about the regions, the NHTSA regions as well, but you see here, Arizona had seven line of duty deaths related to traffic um, fatalities. California had five, Florida and South Carolina both had floor, four, and Illinois had three. Um, if you remember presentations from years past and see the data that I pull out, it's generally region six, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and New Mexico that leads the way. That was not the case here in 2021. Region nine and region four, region nine had 13 and region four had 12 fatalities, making up almost 50% of all of our crashes just in those two regions alone. Um, but crashes were dispersed across all 10 regions. So one of the other things that we do and I'll be doing again this year with the new data we have is we put um, this data at your fingertips and uh, we've mailed a number of these out for folks who've requested them. The block we're looking at on this, this, this is a flash drive in the shape of a key that has uh, a breakdown of all the traffic related fatalities and we do it by agency type, we do it by type of crash, whether it's motorcycle, car crash, or struck by. We talk about ve single vehicle crashes. We talk about seatbelt use. And we also put all of our videos on this uh, thumb drive or flash drive so that you at your agency or your jurisdiction can share this. So it can be used at roll calls. It can be used for presentations. There are downloadable fact sheets that you can print out and post that really are designed to help get officers' minds right when they're behind the wheel and impress upon them the dangers of uh, being on the road, being on the road for a long time, and that you know, traffic is, is a very, uh, can be a very dangerous spot to be in. Um, so we'll be improving those. We still have the data we have now, so if you want some of those, we can send it out. Um, and in the next three months or so, I should be doing a whole nother five-year segment. Everything on that flash drive is a five-year chunk of data, and I keep updating it with the most recent year. So what, what can we do? What recommendations do we make? And, and uh, I've mentioned a few of them, and you've all, I'm sure, heard of Below 100 and some other safety programs, um, but, but we've got to impress upon our officers to do these things, to wear their body armor, to use their seatbelt. Uh, there's a new video out um, and I think it was made by Montgomery County Police here in Maryland about getting out of your seatbelt and how to tactically do it or what decisions you can make if your seatbelt is on and you're confronted uh, by an armed gunman who's walking up to your vehicle. Um, and uh, it certainly, certainly demonstrates that you can get out of that uh, seatbelt quick enough and if necessary, you know, think tactically and back up, get out of there if you're not trapped. Wear your high visibility reflective vest. And this is interesting. In a number of the reports and investigations I've read, uh, you had the reporting entity re uh, recording the fact that officers who were struck were in fact wearing reflective vests. So in three or four of the cases that I reviewed, and unfortunately they were struck, uh, but the, it was noted that they also, apart from having their lights on and their cruisers and taking these other things into account, they were also wearing reflective gear, which is something that we push highly for. A number of, a number of these cases you look at, they're not wearing reflective gear. Um, protect, uh, position your vehicle, think about right side passenger approaches, and also we encourage agencies to at least uh, uh, conspicuously mark the rear of your vehicle. I some, see some police cars that are uh, dark, black, and have no reflective striping on the back. Um, and if you're, if you're running uh, SUVs, sometimes you can't see the light bar that's mounted so far forward. Um, it's always good to have that big Chevron striping for folks to see. And then of course there's TIMS or traffic incident management. And I wanna mention now the Emergency Responder Safety Institute. Uh, not only do they have a certificate in traffic incident management that you can get um, online, but they also are uh, sponsoring um, a tr struck by reporting system. And uh, we encourage everyone to go to um, respondersafety.net to look up that struck by data collection reporting system. I understand it takes about just maybe 10 minutes to fill it out. And this is for you as um, law enforcement officers, 
It's also being uh, passed to the fire service as well as towing and recovery and DOT for everyone to start putting this struck by data in there. And that includes injuries, property damage, as well as fatalities and near misses. This is all done so we can get a, a view as to what's going on, a real good overview as to what's happening on our highways so we can continue to make preventative measures and make improvements. Um, so those are, those are really uh, important uh, things that, and steps that folks can take. Uh, this is my information here. This webinar, which is being recorded, will of course be posted again. If people are interested in additional data or have questions, hopefully there's some questions that came in and we'll check on that in a second. Um, but you can always reach out to me on email and I'll be happy to discuss or share anything with you or, or if you found a discrepancy in my data or anything like that, we'll be, be more than happy to, uh, to discuss that and uh, um, get, all that, uh, get all that squared away or to provide you whatever data you may need. Um, so if you can bear with me for a second, I'm going to start taking a look at some of these questions. Let me go back on camera here. And um, well, let's see, do we collect the number of hours the officer was on duty or uh, uh, awake prior to crash? That's a very good question. And the answer is um, sometimes uh, uh, agencies will submit information that lets us glean a little bit about what their assignment is, how many hours they were working. Sometimes that's reflected in the report that they send us. And very often you'll get a letter from the chief or sheriff explaining the circumstances of this member's death. And they will say, during hurricane, whatever it was, everybody was working 12 hour shifts or the officer had just come off of their long shift. Um, so sometimes we do get information on that, but I have not begun collecting that information in a serious way because it's few and far between um, getting that data. But that's a, you know, and that's one of the things we talk about in our other officer safety and wellness programs here. Fatigue is a real problem. And uh, you'll see in our other programs like Destination Zero and even the Safe Leo program, which stands for Suicide Awareness for Law Enforcement Officers, the topic of um, being fatigued and not getting enough rest is something that's um, very serious and a lot of agencies are beginning to take a look at. I would quickly mention Henderson, Nevada did their own study and started their own program that allows officer, uh, officers, if the uh, data is available, excuse me, the data, if the time is available for the officers to take a 26 minute restorative nap and they provide a quiet room. And they're not the only agency that does that. But if you're, say you're on midnights and you're reporting in, you've been in court all day, all day, first of all, your official should know that. And you should know that he might be working with a tired officer. You, if the radio is quiet, can request time and be put out of service to get a 26 minute restorative nap. And uh, the data indicates that, you know, that really helps you with your alertness and your functioning. So um, again, thank you for that question because fatigue really is an issue. Um, there was a question about specific breakdown by NHTSA region. Um, I can provide that with regard to which states had uh, the, the highest number of crashes. I already mentioned that Arizona had the highest in 2021, but I can provide um, other beyond what I just mentioned, um, uh, more details about specific NHTSA regions. So for example, if you're interested in region two, I can provide you with a list of all the crashes that occurred in region two, what type they were and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, I can certainly, certainly do that. And I'm hoping that this information is useful to you guys. And as I've said in all my webinars, please send me an email and say, you know, Nick, that really wasn't helpful or this was helpful, but could you give us more on this? Or have you thought about doing X, Y, Z? And I'm a complete, completely open, open to that. Um, I'm just reading through a couple of questions here. Uh, can we send... Uh, yeah, we can send the materials to PO boxes. That's not a problem. Um, and um, uh, for additional information, you can visit our website and go to our officer safety page 
uh, we now, the Memorial Fund has sort of three tiers. We have the Memorial, the Museum, and Officer Safety and Wellness. And as you go to our website at lawmemorial.org, you will see that there is an Officer Safety tab. And then under NHTSA, we have all of this material available for you. Um, in the coming year, as I mentioned, I'll be updating all that five-year gap of or five-year run of statistics um, and updating that as well as we're producing, we'll produce more uh, police safety videos like the one we did with Officer Heisler. Um, and then the other thing that's coming up, and I hope I'll get a chance to meet some of you, some of you at Lifesavers. Will already mentioned that we're going to be here in DC for the National Sheriff's Association Winter Conference, but I will be at Lifesavers. Um, and we've got a couple of, I think, invitations for presentations or workshops and seminars, but we'll also have a booth there at Lifesavers, which is going to be in Chicago from the 12th to the 15th of March. So uh, Lifesavers is one of my favorite conferences, and it's um, uh, a really effective way to share information, to network, and of course, find out about all the great technology that is out there that's supposed to help us uh, stay safe. Um, I will, uh, so I just got a question about where to find the video um, with regard to uh, tactical safety. And that video, it was a video that I actually saw when I was watching the Bureau of Justice Assistance um, uh, they have a traffic safety component, and I'm trying to remember the full name. Um, it's uh, of the program, uh, but there was a video introduced by Tom Flory. Many of you may know him, uh, as well as a guy named Terry Nichols, and it was produced by the Montgomery County, Maryland Police Department. Captain Tom Didone, uh, he's been the captain of their traffic safety unit for years. He helped me when I was a uh, traffic, a new traffic safety lieutenant in DC, getting me sort of set up on pedestrian enforcement and things like that. So I will uh, find that video and see if we can put a link up to it on our officer safety and wellness page. But I think if you were to Google Tom Didone, D-I-D-O-N-E, Tom Didone or Montgomery County Police seatbelt safety video, you may be able to find that. And I'm sorry, uh, I don't have the direct link to that. So um, looks like we might have another question that's gonna be fed to me. Um, this is good. I, I mean, I appreciate this and hopefully I can uh, answer all of these questions. If not, I will always say I'll get back to you. <laughs> um, were the 11, 11 struck by impaired drivers inclusive of all traffic crashes or just the officers outside of their vehicles? Yeah, that's a good question. It's a good question for clarification. Um, with all the information I have, out of all 57 fatalities in looking at crashes and struck bys, 11 of the other drivers were impaired. So that's not just struck bys, that's also, that's just one number for all of those crashes. So I hope that answers that question. I'm sure the number's higher, we just haven't gotten all the details yet. Um, and as I mentioned, we confirmed in the reports that two of the drivers were distracted and then one was falling asleep behind the wheel. Um, so those are uh, th that's some of the data we were able able to get. And, and as we continue our exploration with these cases, as more information comes in, I anticipate that that number of impaired that we can confirm were impaired or were charged, that kind of stuff uh, would go up. So um, I think that's about it. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us. And I want to remind you about the um, uh, Lifesavers. Um, I think that's a great conference to go to. So if you can do that, and hopefully if you're going to be there and you're an LEL uh, and are going to be there, you'll come find me at my booth and say hello, or maybe I'll get an opportunity to do a presentation for you guys. So uh, with that, unless uh, Troy or Will have anything else, um, I will uh, say goodbye and thank you for spending this, uh, this uh, 40, uh, 42 minutes with us. <laughs>